Hi, my name is Jeff DeBrose, Research Director for ESET. In our first whiteboard session, we're going to be covering malware, cybersecurity, and best practices to help keep you safe. For starters, I'd like to set a baseline of understanding by going over several security-related terms. To begin with, cybercrime is any criminal act related to computers and networks. Cybersecurity is the protection of data and systems that are connected to the Internet. A virus is a program which replicates by copying itself into another application. A worm is a modified form of a virus which actually can replicate by itself. A trojan is an application that does something differently than what it appears. For instance, such as a trojan downloader, a program that goes into your computer appearing to do one thing, but it actually begins to download other applications. A bot is short for robot. It's a, it's a program that was primarily designed to automate tasks when a machine today is, is, is infected with a certain type of malware, such as a worm, it, is also, it also can be a bot which communicates to a command and control center, which then allows that, those multiple connected bots to form some, a larger uh, group of, of uh, connected bots known as a botnet. And finally, a social network, which is simply a network of nodes or connecting points that are related back to an individual. For instance, if I have 10 friends and those 10 friends have 10 of their own friends, by me connecting to them, I've increased my reach to about 100 friends. And this can go on and become a very large, exponentially growing number. Let's take a look now at how cybercrime is tied to malware and directly affects users. For instance, this, 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 graph, this graphic represents uh, the, the layout of an average type of botnet that we described earlier. So what, one of the elements that are in the botnet is the command and control computer, which is uh, controlled by the criminal element in order to communicate with machines that are infected with malware, also known as bots. For instance, if this machine were infected with malware, also known as a bot, it would be in communication with the command and control center uh, computer through the internet. This machine, the infected computer, would then attempt to push out spam in one of the cases. It can actually take on several uh, different functions. But when it pushes out spam across the internet, there will be victim machines that will pick up that spam. In this particular case, that spam will tie back to a pharmaceutical that it's an, it's an illegal operation, and that pharmaceutical is actually uh, creating uh, illegal uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, and the spam is directing the end users to purchase the pharmaceuticals from that particular site. After they've purchased the pharmaceuticals, the money is then funneled to the criminal element to further enhance uh, their financial agenda. So how big is the problem? Let's take a look at some global numbers to understand the scope and scale of the reach of malware and cybercrime. According to the 2000, June 2009 Netcraft survey, there are 230 million registered domains across the internet globally. And according to Internet World stats, we have a 24% internet penetration rate, and that's with 6.7 billion people on the planet, and that comes out to 1.6 billion users on the internet. So with that, What's the best way to keep ourselves safe? Let's take a look at the, some of the best practices to help protect yourself against this growing threat. First of all, effective antivirus software. Secondly, using that antivirus software, actually run manual scans. Don't just leave the antivirus software to run on your system, uh, systems. A lot of times it's important to simply run manual scans. Also, don't respond to spam. Once you respond to any spam, the people that are pushing out the spam actually know that they've got a live address and that there's someone at the other end that's reading the email. Looking at routers and firewalls, those are very, this is a very important part. When you connect your machine to your broadband connection, if you directly connect your machine, your machine can actually be directly accessed. By using a router or firewall to, to add a layer between yourself and the public internet or your ISP, your system is significantly safer. So with secure browsing, you want to make sure that when you go to a financial website or anywhere where you have a significant amount of privacy that you'd like to uh, experience, you should actually look for that lock icon or the, or the image that shows you that, you're, that your browser is actually in a secure browsing session. 
Strong passwords are especially important when connecting to those financial services websites or anywhere else where you'll have private information, such as even a social network. Strong passwords can be considered things such as a combination of numbers and letters, upper or lower case, or even a passphrase that someone may want to use. Avoid using things such as children's names, uh, your name, pets names, birthdays, and other easily guessed personally identifiable information where someone that knows you may be able to guess that password. When receiving links via instant messaging or email or even via, another, via a website, confirm that link. If someone is telling you that you should go to that site or that particular link and there is no reason behind it, you should confirm the purpose of the person sending you the link. In some cases you may find that they never sent you the link and that, that their machine may have been infected and it is automatically sending you links to malicious sites. When using social networks attempt to limit the personal information you provide on that site. Most people practice non-judicious disclosure of personal information. There is usually too much information on social networking sites. Limiting that information will also limit your liability to uh, being uh, exploited by the criminal element. So with the definition, an example of malware in action and best practices, you hopefully now have the tools you need to better protect yourself in a Web 2.0 connected world.